Hello there, everyone. Welcome to the Bird's Nest Podcast. My name is Joe Donahue, and we have completed the 2023 NFL Draft. It's been three days of craziness, three days of hecticness. Uh, Certainly, there was a lot of crazy that happened outside of the Eagles, uh, but there was plenty of crazy that occurred within the Eagles, too. So, In today's episode of the Bird's Nest Podcast, we are going to be taking some time to talk about those things that occurred, uh, the players that the Eagles picked, the seven players that are members of the draft class, a few of the moves that were made to hopefully shore up some stuff going forward, especially, of course, we're going to talk about the big trade that the Eagles made on day three of the NFL draft, the trade for DeAndre Swift. Uh, running back out of Detroit. Uh, He was the starting running back there for Detroit. So it's going to be a great episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Make sure that you like, subscribe to Bird's Nest Media on YouTube and share this episode. Uh, It really helps the podcast and the channel grow. Uh, So thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully you stick around. So we're going to start wanted to take some time to really break down the seven members of the draft class and how we got there. So one of the things that always tends to manifest itself, especially lately in the draft and in free agency and things like that, is Howie Roseman, his first name, Howie, must be short for how do we get away with all of this? How do we get away with making picks that we make? How do we get away with letting a top five prospect fall to number nine and getting him and then getting his teammate at the end of the first round? How do we get away with some of this? How do we get away with DeAndre Swift, for that matter? How do we get away with nabbing him from the Lions? The general consensus is that the Eagles won the draft. I'm trying to stay away from assigning a specific grade to the draft right now because realistically, something like that is meaningless. Something like that really isn't going to factor in until the Eagles know more about who these players are. And we're not going to know that until about three years from now uh, at the earliest. So that would be a good time to revisit a draft that occurred. But for right now, we're kind of sitting in this sense of this is a good draft. So that's the general consensus, and that's as I'm looking at this, that's what I'm seeing as well. So going into the NFL draft this year, the Eagles had six picks. The Eagles wound up accumulating at a certain point way more than that. Um, The Eagles wound up making seven trades in total. Now, one of those trades was really to settle an anti-tampering allegation that broke just before uh, the first round of the NFL draft began. The anti-tampering violation occurred as a result of the Arizona Cardinals um, contacting Jonathan Gannon before they were supposed to, before they were allowed to. So that was in the wake of the NSC championship game victory. You're not supposed to contact coaches at that time. End of discussion. The Eagles found out about that. The Cardinals wound up self-reporting the violation Uh, So the Eagles and the Cardinals, really their um, selections, their their trades occurred. It was a third round. They swapped third round picks, and the Eagles also sent them a fifth rounder in 2024. So the first trade of the NFL draft, the Chicago Bears went back one slot, the Eagles went up one slot, and the Bears got a fourth rounder in 2024. 
that's going to be a pretty common theme. The Eagles didn't have a ton of draft capital to work with this year. There were other teams, notably the Green Bay Packers, who had 13 picks. So the Eagles would look more to send picks from future drafts for uh, current needs in the draft. So that's what would happen there. So in this case, uh, Chicago and the Eagles uh, basically swapped picks in the first round, and the Eagles sent them a fourth rounder next year as sort of compensation for that. So that was the pick that was used to draft Jalen Carter. We'll come back to the players in a minute. I just want to talk about a little bit of these trades here. So, so Chicago and the Eagles, they made that first trade. Then as we got into the second round and as we got laid into the second round, this was day two, uh, the Eagles wound up trading uh, the 62nd overall pick to the Houston Texans. Uh, the Houston Texans wanted to move up a couple slots into the second round. Uh, they did so. Uh, and in exchange for that, the Eagles got the 188th overall pick and the 230th overall pick. Uh, the Eagles had one sixth rounder. They had several seventh rounders at this point. So the Eagles picked twice in a row in the third round, and then there was no slated pick until the sixth round. The Eagles wanted nothing of that. So the Eagles traded into the fourth round of the NFL draft. They traded with Houston again, and Houston, in exchange, got a third rounder in the 2024 draft. Then was the big trade. The big trade was the Eagles got DeAndre Swift and a seventh round pick this year. And in exchange, they sent their own seventh round pick, or the 219th pick in the seventh round, which they had gotten from Houston, uh, and they sent a fourth rounder in 2025. So that's two years from now. And that, again, the Eagles basically got DeAndre Swift for a steal. We'll come back to the DeAndre Swift trade. Again, this is just kind of an overall summary of what happened. So the DeAndre Swift trade happens, and then... What the Eagles wind up doing later on, the Eagles trade with Houston again. The Eagles trade for Houston's sixth round pick. That's number 191 overall. And in exchange, they send them back to seventh rounders. Uh, the seventh round pick that the Eagles owned, the 248th overall, and then the 230th overall that they had actually gotten from Houston earlier in the draft. And then... The last trade was the Eagles sent that 191st overall pick that they had gotten for two seventh round picks. They sent that to Tampa Bay in exchange for a fifth round pick next year. So, the Eagles, Howie Roseman did a really, really good job sort of negotiating those trades. Now, again, the biggest news trade-wise was DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift comes in to fill the running back hole that was left through the departure of Miles Sanders. Rashad Penny was brought in through free agency. He was brought in on a one-year prove-it deal. DeAndre Swift is another player who's going to be looking to help contribute to that monster. Uh, that includes Kenny Gainwell and Boston Scott. DeAndre Swift is a great player. He's an exceptional. He was a starter in Detroit. Uh, hopefully he carries that through. The one thing that has plagued him over the course of these last several years is injuries. Injuries have not been kind to DeAndre Swift. Uh, he disputes the label injury prone, but the fact of the matter is, is that he has not been a stranger to the injury report. Uh, in the course of the last couple of seasons. So Swift is going to need to work on some of that uh, with the Eagles medical staff. Hopefully he can uh, improve some of that a little bit. Swift also carries a little over a million dollar salary cap hit. So that will 
be important as well as the Eagles continue to try to navigate a narrower cap now that they have signed Jalen Hurts to a multi-million dollar, multi-hundred million dollar contract extension through the, for the next several years. So, But the Lions, from the Lions' perspective, it kind of made a little bit of sense. The Lions earlier in the draft had drafted Jameer Gibbs. He drafted him at the first round. Speculation was rampant, according to NFL sources that were talking to Ian Rappaport and Tom Pelissero. Uh, the negotiations for DeAndre Swift began shortly after that happened. So that's ultimately where things stood, why the Eagles were able to get DeAndre Swift in the way that they did. So let's take a look at who the players the Eagles selected were. Because the Eagles had seven selections by the time all of these trades were done, uh, which is actually net positive of plus one, and that includes the DeAndre Swift trade. So when we go around and we say Howie the Magician, Howie the person who absolutely fleeces other teams, how we keep getting away with getting all of these picks and these great players. This is one of the reasons why, is that Howie is able to negotiate with other teams in such a way that the Eagles are actually able to get more out of what they have. Uh, so it's impressive there. So we're going to start certainly with the uh, number nine overall pick, the Eagles' first pick of the NFL draft this year, Jalen Carter. Jalen Carter is a defensive tackle out of Georgia. Um, during the 2022 season, uh, he had three sacks. He had five hits. He had uh, 24 hurries, and he had three batted balls. Uh, the combine gave him a grade of 7.05. Uh, which would have put him into the potential Pro Bowl range, if you know about combine grades. Um, that 7.05 range means that he's a potential Pro Bowler uh, based off of uh, his college scouting report. Uh, unfortunately, Carter was not able to actually significantly participate in the combine. There's no uh, athletic stats for him or anything to that effect. And that is because, unfortunately, on March the 1st, an arrest warrant was actually put out for Jalen Carter uh, for his involvement uh, in a single vehicle wreck that occurred and that actually killed uh, two members of the Georgia athletic program, uh, including one of his teammates and one of the members of the recruiting staff over at Georgia. Now, that having been said, uh, Carter was not the person who caused the wreck. Uh, he wasn't responsible for their deaths, but he did plead no contest to uh, reckless driving and racing charges. These charges and these off-the-field incidents were things that caused him to drop from being a potential number one overall draft pick to the number nine slot. The Eagles do have a history of doing their due diligence on players. Um, the Eagles have a long history of not really having any significant problems. The biggest problem, per se, over the course of the last decade that jumped out to me, at least, because it's so ingrained in my memory, is the Lane Johnson suspension for illegal substances, uh, which, again, there's not really a ton of stuff that the Eagles do. They do a great job of either working with their players to keep them out of the spotlight in that regard, or they do a great job of finding ways to quietly show them the back door if they start to get too much of a problem. Ultimately, this is something that, at least for me, I have full confidence that the Eagles will have the ability to work with Jalen to make sure that he is not going to be a problem off the field. How we spoke about that, actually, during the press conference that followed Jalen Carter's uh, selection, and he said that one of the things that they do as an Eagles organization is they try to develop people beyond where they're coming in. When you're coming in at 21, 22 years old, certainly you and I can probably relate to some of this. I know I can definitely. 
when you come in at 21, 22, you're a very different person than when you leave the league uh, because you grow, you change, you mature. That's one of the reasons why it was so impressive for Jeffrey Lurie in his annual press conference at the NFL annual meeting earlier this year. One of the reasons why it was so impressive and why it was such a high compliment for Jeffrey Lurie to call Jalen Hurts the most mature 24-year-old he's ever met because the maturity grows. The maturity grows over the course of time. We continue, we don't just turn 21 and we stop growing. We, we grow and we have opportunities to make mistakes and hopefully learn from them and progress farther. So I do think that the Eagles will work with him on that front there. He's a great football player. He really, really is a great football player. Unfortunately, he was involved in a very tragic situation off the field in a negative way. And I do have confidence that he will be able to rise up beyond that and move forward and be a positive contributor to this Eagles team, learning from some of the best players on the defensive line. So Jalen Carter is an exceptional player, and he's coming into an environment with a lot of people that he's familiar with. Nakobe Dean, Jordan Davis, several of his classmates. We'll, we'll talk about them on their own right in just a few minutes. But Nolan Smith and Keely Ringo, both of those guys coming from Georgia, it's going to be a Georgia party up there. And that's going to be uh, putting him in an environment where he's going to want to be able to succeed. Uh, and he's going to be in a certain degree of familiarity, and those guys will be able to help him and help him adjust into the locker room. Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith were talking in their introductory press conference about the idea that, hey, there's chemistry already between them. They know what's going on. They're able to understand what each other is going through. That's going to really help those guys as they grow, as they become exceptional NFL players. Certainly that's the hope. So with Jalen Carter being drafted at number nine overall, he's a great football player. He's going to be in a great environment, full steam ahead. He did have some really, really good seasons. Uh, he had a, he, you don't get drafted at number nine if you don't have them. He was very exceptional uh, in college. So that's Jalen Carter. Looking forward to seeing how he contributes to the Eagles. The 30th overall pick, which the Eagles owned, was spent on Nolan Smith. Um, Nolan Smith, somebody who, he's a linebacker out of Georgia. He spent the past season, he had two sacks, he had five hits, he had 12 hurries on that team. Uh, the combine gave him a grade of 6.33, which... Uh, demonstrates that he could he has the potential to grow into a starter. Um, he could very easily become a starter. Um, NFL Networks, uh, Mark Ross was alluding to him being a Hassan Reddick uh, comparison. That's sort of the closest comparison that he's got. He ran a 4.39 40-yard dash. Uh, his 10-yard split was 1.52. Uh, and he had a 41.5 inch uh, vertical leap uh, at the combine. So these were impressive stats. Uh, again, I'm looking forward to seeing what he has to contribute to the team as well. And it will be great to see him learning. So he also joins now Jalen Carter uh, and Nakobe Dean and Jordan Davis uh, as we start to form this. Uh, University of Georgia Alumni Association chapter that's happening in the NovaCare complex. With the 65th overall pick, the Eagles drafted another member of Stoutland University, Tyler Steen. Uh, he is a guard out of Alabama. And this is, again, this is going to be a pick that we're thinking for the future here. Jason Kelsey is not getting any younger. He's on a one-year deal. He could decide at the end of this season, you know, it's time to retire. If that happens, Cam Jurgens, who is currently slotted in to play guard, will likely move to center. He is the heir apparent to Jason Kelsey as the center, so he's certainly spending a lot of time learning from him. 
once that happens, the guard position opens up, uh, and this would be a great opportunity for somebody like Tyler Steen to step in there uh, and learn and really just solidify, keep that offensive line moving. Tyler Steen had a combine score of 6.13, which puts him at a really strong backup who could develop into a starter. The 66th overall pick was spent on Illinois defensive back Sidney Brown. Sidney Brown's probably going to be the first legitimate safety that came off of the board. Uh, the best safety was Brian Branch, but he can also uh, do some other things in the defensive backfield. Sidney Brown is the legitimate safety here. Uh, so he was drafted at 66 overall. Uh, he had 56 tackles. 15 assists, 14 missed tackles. Uh, Ray Dinger was talking on NBC Sports Philadelphia recently as he was breaking down some of the picks that the Eagles had made. And he was actually talking about, he was actually watching another player, uh, Devin Witherspoon. And he was watching this tape on this other player and he kept looking and he's like, who is this safety? And it was Sidney Brown. Uh, Sidney Brown has a 6.14 score from the NFL Combine, which again puts him in that backup plus could develop into a starter range. Uh, he ran a 4.47 40-yard dash. Um, NFL Network's Mark Ross called him the second coming of Brian Dawkins. And if that's the case, then offense said better be scared because... Algie Crumpler's hit is still echoing in Lincoln Financial Field. Keely Ringo was picked at the 105th overall. That was the fourth round pick that the Eagles traded for from Houston. Uh, he is a defensive back out of, you guessed it, Georgia. See the theme here? We've drafted five defensive players from Georgia over the course of the last two years. So he joins now Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith, Nakobe Dean, Jordan Davis, in that little Philadelphia Eagles Novacare Complex chapter of the University of Georgia Alumni Association. Keely Ringo had a combine score of 6.39, which again, that's somebody he, who could develop into a starter really easily. Um, he had a 4.36 40-yard dash. He had a 1.54 10-yard split within that. Um, one of the things that was mentioned is that the Eagles infrastructure really could support the development of a guy like Kaylee Ringo here. Uh, the Eagles have a little bit of flexibility here. Um, one of the things that was said about him at the combine was that he is scheme independent, uh, which again, that could really, really uh, allow him to flourish in here where we've got a new defensive coordinator. We don't really know the scheme right now. And, Given that we don't really know the scheme, the Eagles are looking for players who could fit that. And uh, Keely Ringo really could fit that, it sounds like, because he is a scheme-independent kind of player. So looking forward to seeing what he can contribute to the team. Uh, again, this is probably more of a depth draft selection than anything else, as are a lot of these. Um Really, with the exception of somebody like a Jalen Carter, we might not see some of these guys as starters, maybe more as backups, but we'll see what happens. The 188th overall pick was Tanner McKee. Tanner McKee is a quarterback. He would be the fourth quarterback on the Eagles roster, uh, right after Ian Book and Marcus Mariota and, of course, Jalen Hurts. During the 2022 season, McKee had 265 out of 437 passes completed, that's a completion percentage of 61.2%. Uh, on average, that's about 6.8 yards per attempt. Uh, he had 13 touchdowns over the course of the 2022 season. What scares me is this number, eight interceptions. Eight interceptions is not good for an NFL quarterback, regardless of where you're at. Certainly putting him in a position where he could learn from guys who've been more seasoned, guys who have been more uh, aware, um, he will grow in that. The Combine gave him a grade of 5.8, uh, which puts him at, it's referred to as average backup. 
Uh, he does have solid decision making. Uh, based off of some of the game tape, one of the things that I do see is that he does uh, make some really good decisions when the first read isn't available. Where the interceptions come in is the consistency element to it. Uh, he is not as consistent with his ball placement. So that really, really comes to be a problem. Uh, he's also not a mobile quarterback, and we're not expecting somebody who's going to go in the sixth round to be as mobile as Jalen Hurts is. Um, we're not expecting him to be as mobile as a starting QB is. We are expecting him to be somebody who can hold down the fort, though. Uh, so the poor mobility and the poor mo consistency are concerns, uh, but he does have some things there that really, really, really do impress. And again, it sometimes comes within those second or those third reads, what happens there. So that would be something to watch as we look at him uh, and as we look at that quarterback battle because there may not be space for everybody. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. And the Eagles' last pick of the NFL draft was pick number 249. Uh, that was Moro Ojomo. Moro Ojomo is a defensive tackle, not from Georgia, uh, but from Texas. Ojomo, over the course of the 2022 season, actually showed significant improvement from previous years. Uh, previous years, he had zero, two, or less sacks. His statistics really were not all that great. But in the 2022 season, he showed marked improvement. Uh, he had five sacks in the 2022 season as a defensive tackle, one hit on the quarterback, and then 20 hurries. So that's significant and a huge improvement from zero. Something must have clicked with him. Uh, he does have a 5.98 grade from the combine, which, again, is that sort of backup phase. Um, 5.04 40-yard dash. Um, it's a 5.04 second. 40-yard dash. Um, he does have strong upper body power. Uh, one of the critiques from him was that he can be a little bit mechanical and segmented, which could lead to some problems on that defensive line when he's trying to, you know, I'm going to bounce off of the offensive lineman that I'm facing, and I'm going to try to go after the quarterback. Again, something must have clicked within that 2022 season for the Eagles to spend their last pick on him. Uh, it will be interesting to see how that pans out over the course of the upcoming uh, season, uh, over the course of training camp, etc. So that will be fascinating. So with the Eagles' seven picks in this year's NFL draft, plus the big blockbuster DeAndre Swift trade, the general consensus seems to be, and my gut feeling is, that this is a really, really good draft for the Eagles. We were going into this hoping that Howie Roseman would deliver another amazing draft, uh, and it sounds like he did, based off of what we're looking at here. But let me know what you think in the comments below. You can find Bird's Nest Media on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Amazon Podcasts, Spotify, and our YouTube channel. You can like and subscribe to Bird's Nest Media on YouTube. Share it to your social media pages. That will really help out the podcast. You can also visit birdsnestmedia.com to find the latest Eagles news. And if you feel so inclined to support more endeavors like this one, you can find the link to our Patreon at birdsnestmedia.com. So thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Bird's Nest Podcast. I'm Joe Donahue, and let's go Eagles.